A lot of you guys ask, how is it that I maintain 10 to 12% body fat pretty much year round? Am I starving myself? Am I super restrictive on my diet? Well, I'm gonna be talking about that in this video, speaking not only from my own personal experience, but as a fitness coach who has helped hundreds of people get into shape at this point in time. Now, disclaimer, this is not medical advice. I'm merely giving my own opinion from my personal experience, as well as experience of others that I have coached. Now, I know a lot of you guys and girls want an overall lean physique. You wanna reveal your abs, you wanna look overall fit. And a big part of this is getting to a low enough body fat percent. So, First, I'm gonna talk about how to get to 10% body fat or quite close to that. And then I'm gonna talk about how to maintain that body composition year round because that is pretty much equally as important as the first point. All right, peep the tripod I was using earlier. Now, when it comes to wanting to change your body fat, it always comes down to these two factors. One, the number of calories you consume. Two, the number of calories you burn, otherwise known as your total daily energy expenditure. Now I take it that if you're watching this video, you're probably higher than 10% body fat at the moment, meaning you're gonna to wanna to put yourself in a calorie deficit, meaning you need to consume less calories than you burn. For example, if you eat 2,200 calories, but you burn 2,500 calories, then you're gonna be in a net deficit of negative 300 calories. But not only could you eat less, let's say we flip that, you could also be burning more calories than you consume. Meaning you could also eat at 2,500 calories, but move more and burn 2,800 calories, which will still result in the net deficit of negative 300 calories. However, in my opinion, the best approach is when you do a combination of both. You eat a little bit less calories. So instead of 2,500 calories, let's say 2,350 calories. And then you burn a little bit more calories as well. Instead of 2,500 calories burned, maybe you burn 2,650 calories. In this example, we still end up with the net deficit of negative 300 calories, meaning it's the same, but realize it is less extreme on both ends. You don't have to diet as hard, but you also don't have to do as much cardio. Now, a lot of you guys probably understand this if you watch my previous videos about dieting and bulking, but a bigger question is always, okay, how much of a deficit do I actually need to be in and how long do I need to be dieting for? Now, here's a few things that might help. First off, it takes roughly 3,500 calories to burn one pound of fat. Meaning, if you wanna lose one pound of fat in one week, you wanna be in a 500 calorie deficit on a daily basis. But what if you wanna lose more than one pound of fat per week? What if you wanna lose two pounds, three pounds, four pounds, maybe even five pounds? Let's chill out for a sec. As a rule of thumb, you wanna to aim to lose at most 1% of your body weight per week. Meaning if you are 200 pounds, you wanna lose at most two pounds per week. I will tell you firsthand, the faster you lose weight, usually the worse off you are. It's not better, it's not healthy, plus, it's gonna be much harder for you to stick to. I even find the 1% body weight drop per week kind of too aggressive in some circumstances. Like let's say if you are body recomping, you're at a relatively healthy body fat percentage, but you're, let's say you're trying to get to like 10% body fat. Well, the bigger your deficit, the harder it will be for you to actually build muscle if you want to body recomp. There's evidence actually showing this. The bigger the deficit, the harder it will be for you to actually build muscle. In fact, after a certain point in time, you're not gonna be building muscle at all. This is exactly why bodybuilders don't build muscle when they're cutting. And with the context that you guys probably don't wanna be like 10% body fat, but super skinny and have no muscle at all, what I'm about to say might change how you completely think of dieting, okay? In my opinion, the slower the fat loss, the better. Let me explain. Now this mainly applies for regular people. They're not competing in bodybuilding. They just wanna look fit and also have a life outside of fitness. Most of the time, that will involve you not only losing body fat, but you also building muscle. Hence, you don't wanna be in too big of a calorie deficit or else you're not gonna be able to body recomp. But then the second reason that's arguably more controversial is most people 
can't even stick to their fitness goals to begin with. And let me ask, how many people did you know that wanted to get in shape and then just stopped like halfway through? It is a very common problem because people tend to overextend themselves when it comes to fitness. So the path of least resistance, i.e. being in a smaller calorie deficit where you can still have somewhat balance, you can still enjoy yourselves occasionally, you can still live some semblance of a normal life, is in my opinion the better approach because it takes into account the most important factor of them all. And that is being consistent long term. I realize this video style might have a lot of parallels with Graham Stephan's videos about accumulating wealth long term and benefiting from compound interest. Really, a lot of this stuff, a lot of the things in life takes a ton of patience, takes a ton of hard work on a consistent basis to actually reap any benefit from. And I guarantee if I sat here and I told you, okay, if you wanna lose two pounds of fat per week, that means a 7,000 calorie deficit on the week, that's a 1,000 calorie deficit per day, like maybe 2% of you guys will actually apply that. <laughs> I understand that that's just not practical advice for most people. Hell, I probably wouldn't even wanna do something like that, you know? So instead, let me give you the most honest and practical dieting advice that I've even given some of my clients, okay? Focus on these three things. More vegetables, more fruit, and more lean sources of protein. If you don't know what lean sources of protein are, just Google some examples. I'll give you some chicken breast, white fish, shrimp, lean cut steak, protein powder even. These are all lean sources of protein. If you focus on these three things, I guarantee you will have a much easier time being in a calorie deficit compared to your current diet. And you're gonna find out that, hey, you don't really need that big of a deficit long term if you just carry out this diet for a very long period of time. It's like almost like a slow cut, but you're not even tracking. Now, depending on how your diet currently looks, don't just like cold turkey change your entire diet. Like, no, you know, try to incorporate this stuff slowly into your diet. Maybe focus on getting one meal per day where you're incorporating at least one of these three groups in each meal. Eventually, you're gonna get to the point where the majority of your meals incorporates all three things, or at least, if not fruit, then vegetables and lean, lean protein. Also, you can perhaps think about taking a protein powder if you feel like you're not getting enough protein in your daily diet. In my opinion, I think my protein has like a ton of affordable options and comes in pretty much every single flavor. You can get something cheaper like regular Impact Whey, or if you want something a little more fancy, you get like plant protein, or they have another like more premium whey line. They have something called clear whey protein, which is meant to be taken with water, so it's no calories there. But also, it has the best macros in a protein powder ever. It's 80 calories, 20 grams of protein. For you clever folks out there, one gram of protein equals four calories. So this is pretty much all protein. And if you're skeptical, well, guess what? You can get a free tub of clear whey protein. It's gonna be the peach mango flavor, plus 45% off your entire order if you use code TPATH from September 5th to September 8th, okay? It's very important. Between September 5th and September 8th, you can get the free tub of clear whey, the peach mango flavor, on top of 45%. So if you're interested in trying, but you don't want to pay the full price for clear whey, now is your chance. And remember, you can only get the free tub of clear whey plus 45% off your order if you use code TPATH. It will support my page and it's greatly appreciated. Now, I've talked a lot about dieting, but like I mentioned before, the best approach is usually a combination of dieting as well as burning more calories or doing more cardio. So when it comes to cardio, I recommend instead of like tracking it, if you don't want to track it, choose a form of cardio you personally prefer the most. If you like basketball, play basketball. If you like positive group activities and the chance of potentially meeting your significant other, Join a run club in like a big city. If you get angry easily, pick up boxing. If you're entrepreneurial, consider walking on a treadmill or using a Stairmaster while listening to your favorite podcast. And if you're into biohacking, start your day off with a 5 a.m. early walk. The thing about cardio, guys, is it's just about moving more. If you can't specifically track how many calories you're burning per session, it's okay. You know, freehand it a little bit. You don't have to be super analytical about it. And in my opinion, if you just do those four things, you do it consistently with time, measure your weight week after week, you're gonna notice that you know, if you're making an overall trajectory downwards, you're heading in the right path. Keep on doing that. There's no need to change things. You do that until you reach 10% body fat or your desired body fat percentage whenever you wanna stop. And then from there, technically you're gonna to need to reverse diet to get your calories back up, especially if you're feeling kinda of depleted, kinda of low energy. 
but they realize, hey, I actually like the way I look, I like the way I feel, I like my lifestyle, I like the healthy food I'm eating, then maybe a reverse diet might not even be necessary in some specific cases. Now, overall, if you're looking for more personal guidance on getting to your fitness goals, I highly recommend you apply to my one-on-one -on -one fitness coaching program because there is gonna be a level of individuality between everyone. So if you want like the most specific advice, then of course, consider joining that. I've helped tons of people make transformations. So if that means anything, apply in the link in the description. It would be super awesome to work with you. So now you're at 10% body fat. How do I stay here? So here is the absolutely no BS, best way to maintain 10% body fat, and that is have the right parents. Now first off, anyone can get to 10% body fat. However, there's an idea known as the body fat set point. This is essentially the body fat range that your body naturally wants to be at. And ultimately, this varies from individual to individual. Some people naturally have a higher body fat set point, others, like myself, have a lower body fat set point. Now, when you're above your body fat set point, you might feel kind of groggy, you're never hungry, your health markers like blood pressure, cholesterol is probably not gonna be the healthiest. Your body's essentially telling you, hey, you should probably lose some body fat. On the other hand, if you're below your body fat set point, you might feel always like low energy, maybe kind of irritable, always hungry, your strength in the gym might even decrease. So while I think with enough conviction, anyone can get to 10% body fat, I don't think that everyone would be able to maintain it. But something a little bit above that, perhaps like 13% body fat, might feel way better. And you'll still look really good, but hey, you're probably gonna be even stronger and healthier at a slightly higher body fat percentage. And with that said, if you're struggling, I don't think we can purely blame genetics here. I think you can greatly increase the likelihood of maintaining a super lean physique. Maybe it's not 10% body fat, but maybe 12%, 13% with these next two factors. And number two is focusing on habits that are actually enjoyable to you. And the flip side of that is not forcing habits that will burn you out. So while genetics is kind of like nature, building the right habits is more like nurturing. A good example is with cardio. If you absolutely hate doing daily 20 minute cardio sessions on the Stairmaster and the only thing getting you through doing that five times per week is you being able to watch highlight reels of one championship, maybe instead of doing this little habit you got going on that you're trying to force, perhaps join a Muay Thai club because you've always wanted to try Muay Thai and practice martial arts, and you like the idea of you're developing your self-defense skills. So you take the leap, you join a Muay Thai club, and you end up meeting like a ton of friends that all have the same interests as you. So now you're, instead of just going to the gym, you feel like you have a community. So now you go from doing something you absolutely hated to doing something that you actually enjoy. It's become a staple part of your week. In fact, you look forward to going to the Muay Thai club. So if you were that person, you tell me which option would have been more enjoyable for you. I can even speak from my own personal experience. I hate the traditional like cardio equipment, like Stairmaster, elliptical, that sort of thing. So the original plan was I was gonna do boxing. I even got Bob here in case I ever wanted to just do it at home. So fast forward a couple months, I started noticing that it wasn't practical for me to continue boxing because I started getting wrist pain. And of course I should prioritize lifting weights over boxing. So I thought to myself, okay, is there something else that is more practical and that I would enjoy more, be an easier habit to build? And I thought to myself, well, I hate staying indoors. I like going outside and getting fresh air. So a year ago, I decided to get a bike. Pretty much in between 30 degree weather all the way up to 98 degrees, which it was like earlier this week, I'm pretty much riding that bike everywhere. And now every time I wanna go somewhere in the city, I've made my commute a stable, form of cardio for me. This is why you hear there's no like one size fits all approach when it comes to cardio. I can only give you like high level things because ultimately I always believe that the best approach is always the approach that you're gonna enjoy the most. You need to treat fitness as a lifestyle. It's the most cliche thing that no one freaking listens to. Well, at least the people that are struggling with it need to hear this the most, yeah? So the first factor on how to maintain 10% body fat sustainably was genetics. You can't really control that. Second factor was habits. Okay, I definitely can control that, but what if my lifestyle changes? Well, that comes into the third factor, and that is be flexible with your fitness goals. I see a lot of people adopting an all or nothing approach when it comes to fitness. It's like they're either going 110% or 0% and then they just give up. This is why you see people yo-yo dieting. This is why you see people 
being on and off in the gym. I think a common example you see is with students or people working a job that's only busy during specific seasons. You know, if you're a student, you might only be consistent during the summer. And then once school starts, it's like you completely fall off. And if you ask them what happened, well, they say, well, I just got busy. And I never understood this thinking. You shouldn't be dedicating most of your time to fitness anyway. So when I hear that, it's just a cop out excuse. You wanna find a more balanced approach, maybe it involves decreasing the number of days you're working out, maybe it involves you eating out more, but finding healthier options like Chipotle, Kava, that sort of thing. But at least follow something, right? And this goes beyond just trying to maintain a lean physique. This can go for if you're trying to build muscle, if you're trying to build strength, if you're just trying to get in shape in general, like, because if you're on and off, that just tells me that you're probably just relying on willpower, you're not building habits that you actually enjoy, and it's the wrong approach. So for me personally, being completely honest, how I'm able to sustainably maintain roughly 10 to 12% body fat year round, I would say it's like 40% genetics because yes, I have a low body fat set point, but it's also 60% the habits I've built along the way. And the fact that I've never fallen off, I've always been consistent for the past nine and a half years now. And that's just not me consistently working out for an hour a day, four to six times per week. No, it's also me maintaining my activity levels. That's why I chose to move to a city where I'm, most of the time I'm gonna be walking, I'm gonna be biking, I'm gonna be on my feet. And that's also nine and a half years of me consistently, most of the time, eating relatively healthy. I don't eat a whole lot of junk food because I always feel like ass when I do. If I had to break up my diet, I would say 80% of the time I'm eating something relatively healthy, but there is gonna be a 20% where it's not gonna be the cleanest food. But even then, I would say, a good 95% of the time, I'm at least having one of those three important food groups in what I'm eating. There's at least a lean source of protein. If not, there's a packed with veggies. If not, I'm eating a dessert that has fruit in it or something, right? So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hopefully this kind of changed your mind on how much more balance you can have in your life, even if you're dieting and wanting to maintain a lean physique. We all have a life to live, but a big part of life is also growth. So I hope I'm leading by example here when I say that. Thank you guys so much for <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please leave a like to support my page. Hit subscribe to Level Up Physique. Hit the bell notification so I don't get those comments about man, I just missed this video after my arm workout or whatever it is. And I'll see y'all in the next one.